Welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. In this video it's time to take a close look at an old school bootleg system. This is called VDTEX. VDTEX is a company that also released other peripherals when it comes to the Game Boy. But in this video I just wanted to take a close look at this Famicom 8-bit version. Is this thing a very good replacement when it comes to my original NES? Because those things are getting broken every single time. So I really wonder how this thing actually is. The way how this thing actually works also is very cool because you're going to get yourself like the way of the Famicom. You know where you can put the controllers at the side. Player 1 at the left and player 2 at the right like it should be. But the way how everything is constructed, especially when it comes to the plastic, it's in a very good materials. At the front we're going to get us on a reset and an on and off switch. And at the top we can put in the games, not like the one that you need to slide them in. Nevertheless, I think it's a very cool design and I was really intrigued when seeing it. The controller ports are slightly different when it comes to the original, so I cannot really use a light gun. That is very unfortunate. There is no clone I'm having laying around that comes, or comes with the same connector. No idea why they even like made the decision to get like a different connector, so we cannot really use original controllers. Doesn't spoil the fun, we're going to have a lot of fun, and let's see what I'm also going to get with the teardown. <laughs> But it is all fun and game with this VD text, but this is an absolutely great like replacement of your original NES system. Particularly when you're looking at the models we're having here. Because the one that you need to slide in that cartridge, oh man, what a mess when it comes to the connector. And is this like a cool retro way just to play your old school games? That is something I just wanted to test out today. Alright, so the very first unfortunate thing that I found that the on and off switch doesn't work at all. Because basically when I'm flipping it to the off, it's just already turned on. Oh boy, that's not a great start. So where these, let's say, systems were meant to play on a CRT, on an LCD we do have like a pretty good idea how good the signal is. I don't know if the camera is going to be picking it up, but the signal does have like a lot of interference. And to be honest, like when you're looking at the new generation Chinese clones, yeah, to be honest, those look way better than this particular thing. But well, let's take a close look at the gameplay and how does the controller play. Man, this is a very sturdy, annoying cable. Let's go. So, I must say it does feel way better than the original NES controller. Also, the sound is not like it's supposed to be. Yep, it sounds all messed up. The turbo button seems to be working just fine. Another thing I wanted to try out just to see how it works actually with the Earthworm Gym and the Famicom adapter seems to be without any problem. You can just basically boot up the games, so it does work with that. It's kind of cool. All right, so yep, finally whipped that annoying crow. Damn it! But so far so good, no problem whatsoever. But again, like the inference on the display is pretty damn bad. Okay, another thing I want to test out the D-pad, see how responsive it is, absolutely great. Oh, this game is absolutely amazing if you go home to have a turbo button. So, no problem whatsoever. I need to really get used to the controls, simply because this D-pad is very sturdy. But, when it comes to that, absolutely great. Oh yeah, there we're going to have like an old school multi-game card. Unfortunately, we cannot test the do of like using an LCD. I can get myself my, I can grab myself my Bang & Olufsen TV, but it's not going to be working because I don't have the light gun that supports this connector. I have no clone whatsoever. That's kind of cool. There are a couple of games in here. Yep, there we go. What the hell is this? Is this a shooter game? Hmm. No, this isn't really a shooting game. But it's a very unique multi-game card because you need to use the reset button to get in the different game. There is no manual whatsoever. I have seen this on, let's say, Game Boy games, but not on a system like this. Okay, cool. So there is actually like a shmup in here. Oh yeah! Woo! Turbo button! Yeah! I just wanted to check out how the support is when it comes to the different Mario game I'm having laying around over here. But it's kind of weird, it sounds even slower than the previous one. Normally we have like this problem when it comes to... Hey, damn it! Hey, what the hell is going on? The thing is like, I always like had let's say, issues with the ball games on those Chinese weird looking devices, but now it's not a way around. And I think because this thing does run on a different system that I'm used to. 
But another thing is like the on and off switch doesn't really work. Okay, but we do have like a multi game card. The 4 one did work, but it's absolutely like a dead thing what I got with the other one. Oh, you know, like that is the thing when it comes to getting sometimes old tech, especially when it comes to 8-bit. I don't have a lot of luck with this. But let's get the show on the road and let's do a quick teardown. I just wanted to see how this thing looks in the inside. I'm just going to be honest, this thing is one big disappointment when it comes to the city quality. I was really hoping to get a good like product and maybe a great solution to play my old good, old bit games on an, like CRT or an LCD. But one thing is for sure, now I am looking at it, it's like this thing is not really worth it. It's really bad, low quality in my opinion. But when you're looking at the device itself, this is some really old school tech. So nowadays I reviewed a lot of this, uh, these like say new versions, Famicom clones from China, and they have like small tiny boards, but this is some old school, let's say technology in the inside. So let's take a close look at this gigantic chip collection. So over here, what we're going to find are basically Hyundai chips made in Korea. So then over here having two separate chips, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, like for me it's old school tech and I don't exactly know, know what the chip will do in this device itself. So now having two wires coming from the back over here all the way to the front. The construction in general is quite interesting. The reset button, yeah, it's just a separate PCB basically that sticks in here with the button with the membrane. Don't know where the brain went, oh there we go, here it is. But then we're having the on and off switch. That is the weird story going on over here. That this thing has like a broken switch or something is loose. It's kind of weird that it does give automatically like power. So I don't know if somebody has been messing around with it, but all the wires come from this part over here to this PCB. It's interesting to be honest, really, really interesting. You can see the wires go down there. But there is one particular thing I just want to double check and this is strange. So basically when now having disassembled the button. Okay, so now it seems to be working. So I don't know exactly what is going on over here, but there is something not right why this thing is actually not working. The only thing I can think of is there's something wrong with this piece of plastic that is basically like connecting underneath here that also like switches something or basically like doing something with a plastic connected where the con or basically with the cartridge. I think this thing hasn't been in the right position. So let's see if we can connect this. Okay. So the fix was quite easy. I think there was something wrong over here that was basically holding the switch to one point. Okay, so there's nothing bad with this. So I'm very glad to be honest. So let's put this thing back together. The VDTEX is one of those like products I just needed to pick up to check it out for you guys. But this is like pure nostalgia when it comes to the 8-bit era. But unfortunate, besides like having a good build quality when it comes to the case, that is by the way nothing to compare it with the Chinese stuff I'm reviewing here most of the time, this is absolutely a cool design. I just wanted to check it out, if it's worth picking up. Eh, and when you're looking at it audio wise, but also video or visual wise, it's not great at all. Thanks for watching guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this, and it would be great to see you in the next video.